Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Most magnificent Abba Yah. Um, again, we come to you in your presence, humbly asking and requesting in the magnificent name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, for understanding to be open and hearing would truly be granted to us that a performance would come about from those of you who have ordained to eternal life. Speak to us your words of truth. And my prayer is that these sins will sink deep down in our hearts. Hallelujah. You may be seated. All right. Uh, tonight, actually, what we're going to do is, is, is uh, expose the intricate workings of our adversary. And um, I would like to think that I've been walking this um, life for a little time now. And um, there's a difference when you, well, let me, let me go this route. There should be a difference in people, um, especially if you have been in this way. It's called the way uh, for a period of time. There should be a level of maturity that should be exhibited. Um, the young should want to come and sit at your feet if they can detect that there's wisdom in you at all. Yet wisdom does not come simply because a man has multitudes of years or gray hair on his face. That man can be just as foolish as a young man. Every young man is a fool. Every one of them, I have never, ever met a wise young man. Not in all my life. When you find one, you show them to me. Uh, because if that was the case, he would be teaching. And of course, the understanding of the wise shows us that unless a man has a multitude of years on him, there's no way he can be wise. Because wisdom comes by experience. It comes by life's trials and tribulations. And even at that, those things that are designed for our perfection, many of us still do not learn the lessons that it should teach. Uh, there's many, many times that we have often try our best uh, to give everybody the comprehension, the understanding of what the law of Yah is as well as the prophets. Much is written and very little is understood. Yah has a very dynamic way of communicating with us, his people. He has us to all experience this life and the cycle of life. We start young, and perhaps if his grace is upon us, we may one day be old. We live in his world, and we look at a man, we look at a woman, and in our heart of hearts, we actually express and say, how can that person really know more than me? I mean, I hear the same things that they do. And comprehend and understand the same things they do. And I, I've always answered to people, I said, you know, it's amazing how wise everybody is after they hear the truth expressed. That comes because if you have the spirit of truth in you, that's not you acknowledging it. That's a spirit that's in you that's acknowledging it. And we get it wrong many, many times. Uh, uh, if you leave man to himself, he would take all glory away from Yah. He would do it as if he is the sum and the epitome of all wisdom. You watch. You watch over and over again. Yet and still, the word teaches us that there is no way that a man or a woman 
could ever obtain to a level of maturity if they cannot control their tongue. We know these things. The problem is, is we do not know how to handle one that is in our presence using the tongue unlawfully. Discernment seems to escape us, and we really truly do not love our brothers and our sisters the way that the scriptures teaches us in order to check them. The prophet said that the tongue is an unruly evil, and it is full of deadly poison. The reason why it's hard for us to discern the tongue at times is because the person or persons who is wielding and wagging and yielding this sword often makes themselves very friendly towards us. And our guard is down when a, someone is either tail-bearing or slandering or defaming because we show that when we give place to a tongue that wags that we ourselves do not have much fear of Yah. I'm appalled because we are a well, let me say this, at least we have very good instruction that comes from this pulpit. That if a person really truly wanted to be Kodesh, if a person really truly wanted to be sanctified, I said if they really truly wanted to be that way in their heart of hearts, they would. And you would see as well as hear the fruit. I think that many times we use the analogy of fruit so much that we forget the whole purpose of the fruit. The fruit that the Bible is speaking about is the actual expression of one's life when good fruit, which is exhibited from the Ruach, is operating in their lives. Sometimes we confuse it with looking at natural fruit and we can discern that very well, but spiritual fruit, we have a hard time discerning because the slanderer and the tail bearer and the backbiter, again, they disguise themselves. They present themselves as friendly and our guard is down. But I submit to you that the only way that you can be deceived is if first you are deceived. And many times we are deceived by those who wag their tongue, which in actuality what they're doing is expressing the hidden man of the heart. And the only way that this is going to stay at the forefront of our minds is we have to continually immerse ourselves in the word of Yah. And that we don't do. That's the reason why it's not retained. David said, I will hide thy word in my heart. And the whole purpose of hiding his word is so that I will not sin against thee because all sin at first is against Yah. Every bit of it. When you sin against your brother, you have first already sinned against Yah. When you sin against your sister, you have already first sinned against Yah because his law is already written. His statutes are already prescribed and set. So all sin, every bit of it, is an affront against the one who gave us his commandments. We talked about before the viper. 
And I use the term viper to make it very easy for us to understand. When we speak about viper, we know that a viper is very, very deadly. The viper, by its very nature, is poisonous. And there is no good in the viper at all. You can be sure that the very character and nature of a viper is to bite you. And when they bite you, the whole purpose of that is to infuse in you what they have in them. They, they are depositing something inside of you so that you will become just like them. In Matthew 12, 24, the Messiah said, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, remember, because there is none good, no, not one. So he's teaching us that we're coming directly from the position of a fallen nature, which we forget. He says, how can you, being evil, speak Good things. When we are anointed, at times, good things come out of us when we choose to be sober and to walk in sobriety. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So everything that comes out of your mouth comes directly from your heart. Even if you did not mean it, you have just discovered how wicked your heart is. If it came out, it's because you are deceived. Slander. The scriptures is a book of salvation. And that is what we always want to hear. We want to hear the part about being or having salvation. We don't ever want to hear the other part that brings a balance, which is it's a book of warning. That is also a book of damnation. Titus 3.1 says, and we're going to visit this from both the King James. All texts will come from the King James unless otherwise noted. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities. In other words, this is something that should constantly be rehearsed. Because you think about this for a moment. In your life, you were doing your thing. And the Most High came and knocked at your door and visited you. And from that time forward, he began to chart your course to eternity. And what's amazing is, is he uses someone in our generation that breathes the same air we breathe, eat the same food we eat, and speak just like we do. And yet and still, he does not give you the ears to hear many counselors. If you are wise, he only has you to hear one among a thousand. But yet we have many people who fancy themselves to be counselors. To be subject means to put yourself in a position to where you would actually yield. And I'm going to use this word loosely because it actually brings an impact to the demands. I mean, after all, since y'all is ordering your footprint and your footstep, would he put you in front of a fool? Would he put you in front of an ignorant man or a dullard, stupid man that would be contrary to his will? No, he wouldn't. That's why he said in Jeremiah 3.15, I will give you pastors according to my heart and they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. The glory belongs to him because it is his knowledge 
And it is comprehension that is being fed to you. And the one thing we're missing in this generation is respect and honor for authority. The only reason why we respect the Gentiles or have any honor towards the Gentiles or any fear of the Gentiles is because we are afraid that they may take some Federal Reserve notes out of our pocket when we are penalized for breaking their law. But we have no fear at all. No conviction whatsoever at all. The steel Small voice of the Ruach does not even reprove us, even when we're in the presence of holy men and women. When you are poisoned, your whole heart is only there to poison other people. So the admonishment is to put you in mind. And be subject to principalities and powers and to obey magistrates to be ready to every good work. And then the instruction says to speak evil of no man. And how little do we pay attention to that word? This is a wise man giving instructions to a younger man. Be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men, because you do get more with honey than you do with vinegar. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Some of us remember our state prior to conversion, and even remember our state while in conversion and going on to perfection, some of the foolishness that we have done since then. And I tell you that it's, it's those painful daggers that when you realize that you have transgressed and cursed the law of Yah and failed him, that brings about the most excruciating pain to know that you have failed the one who loved you. If there's any consciousness in us whatsoever at all. We live in a generation where we need Correction. We should desire the reproofs of the wise. Because we were also sometimes foolish. We were also disobedient, deceived, and serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. The scriptures version says it like this, and it has a more concrete expression, and it brings about a little bit more impact. It says, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work. But we love contending today, don't we? We only contend about something when we're ignorant. Because if we were wise, we wouldn't contend. Not to slander anyone. Did you hear that? It didn't dis discriminate at all. This is not to slander anyone. And today, we even have a hard time discerning when we're slandering. We're so messed up in the mind, we, we don't even know when we're slandering yet. And still, we don't fear enough not to slander. Even if we're uncertain. Wow. That's true. Wisdom would teach. Don't say nothing at all. <laughs> not to slander anyone. Not to be quarrelsome. To be gentle. Showing all meekness to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient. Led astray. Serving various lusts and pleasures, living in evil and envy, being hated and hating one another. Adversary is Shatan, is Shatan, the arch enemy of good. Did y'all hear that? There's only one that is good, 
And that's the most high Yahweh. So he is the arch enemy of him. That is good. He withstands him at every beck and call, every chance he can get. We understand that very, very well because we can see the conditions of the world that we're in. It's not hard to see that the world at this time and the dominion of this world at this time belongs to the adversary. Since he's so evil in his character, he's so wicked, and we know that the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy, why does he just not annihilate and eliminate everyone? That's because he has a job to do as well. You see, he's going to get the majority of souls. And he full well knows it because men love darkness rather than light. But what he's after are those who will yield to the Most High by their own free will. That's the reason why this thing, and Yah has allotted this cosmos to run for a certain period of time. Because Yah wants your free will. And uh, Hasatan. Want your free will as well. He wants willing subjects. Yet and still even amongst the assembly. The adversary. Is right in the midst of us. And he shows out all the time. I mean there's a reason why people. Are very careful when they speak to me. It's not because I'm just pastors, because when they hear these words, when they hear these teachings, something in them lets them know that this man is a man not to be toyed with, especially if you're going to hate your brother. Because some of the things that people would say to you, they would dare not say to me because they know they would get rebuked and reproved and corrected and admonished. And if so many times of that, they still will not yield to the correction of the Ruach, they will be put out and put away. Peter says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. In the Greek, the word adversary is diabolos, false accuser, devil Slander. You can be converted, be filled with the Ruach, and be baptized. Meet all the conditions of transformation and still give place to the devil. Slander. The action or crime of making a false spoken statement. Damaging to a person's reputation. Now understand this. While these are the worldly definitions, they do very well in explaining slander. See, many times we slander because we don't feel like that we're actually putting forth words that would damage a person's reputation. We actually believe that we're telling the truth. And that's how we give ourselves a pass. Make false and damaging statements about someone to defame someone's character. In other words, this is not the edifying. This is the very opposite. This is the tearing down. Blacken someone's name. Tell lies about to speak ill, evil of, sully. Someone's reputation, libel. Smear, cast aspirations. On spread scandal about. The only reason why a man or woman would do something like that is because the adversary is ruling in their hearts more than the word of Yah. I submit that if you did hide Yah's word in your heart, you would not submit to any of these. Base. Base. 
natures. All defamation in which someone tells one or more persons an untruth about another. And of course that usually happens if your emotions or your feelings are hurt. To make yourself feel better, you have to tell untruths about someone. Care nothing of y'all's order. Which untruth will harm the reputation of the person defamed. And that whole purpose is to get others to ally with you in order to bring pressure for bear. To make a false spoken statement that causes people to have a bad opinion of someone. The utterance of false charges or misrepresentations which defame and damage another's reputation. We know envy will cause someone to seek to damage someone's reputation. We know jealousy would cause someone to damage someone's reputation. And all this comes because you really truly are not mature and have no self-control. You don't know yourself. You do not know yourself like you should. I mean, the admonishment according to the apostles that gives no place to the devil. A person who commits slander actually shows you the lack of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in their lives. They're really truly showing you how immature they are. Because when you go around in this world functioning off your emotions or your feelings which you can't even make sense of yourself. And I'm not telling you to be zombies because we do feel. But even those feelings should be in order. But because you feel something or you perceive something don't mean you should give voice to it. While they may have passed from death to life, they have not learned how to love the brother. That means we had an experience to where we have been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And of course, coming out of Christianity and then having our mind renewed for who we really truly are, we still function somewhat in that abstract mindset of believing this once saved, always saved. And it shows. It shows in our lack of maturity and not being able to control the tongue. 1 John 3, 14 says, For we, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren, and he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And I submit to you the only way that you can really truly display that you don't love your brother is by not being able to control your tongue when they are not around. I mean, Yah has not made you the Holy Spirit police. You're not qualified to adjudicate all matters. Because in this area of their life, they are still very immature and very cardinal and very dangerous. Some of us, while being converted spiritually, are still very fleshly minded. From years of counsel and experience of being set apart, pastor, me, living with the saints, has taught me it takes somewhere about 10 years before one actually gets control of their tongue. I didn't say that they arrive. I say it takes at least somewhere about 10 years of living set apart. And even at that, it is not a guarantee that it's so. Because every man's tongue and learning how to control your tongue is based on your level and your love for the one who created you. And everybody don't love him like your deceitful heart tells you it does. Everybody simply is not mature. A mature saint hears things a lot differently than someone who has been in the faith for five years. 
It's obvious. It's obvious. After living set apart in this way every single day and having well over two decades of this experience, that when I hear things, I hear them a little bit different than you do. That's why when I speak, like I demonstrated in the dining hall, about everybody who thinks they know the law, don't actually know the law. That's because these days, set apart, multitudes of years, of not rubbing elbows with the Gentiles, living around my brethren and my sisters and elders, experiencing everything, because the attack, everybody just assumes that living in a straight way or being on the community is going to make life like a utopia for them. But this is the front line. This is on point. This is the assault. Where you're at is easy. I can speak from that experience because I've been there. But if you have not been here, you can't speak from that experience. And I'm not talking about visiting either. I'm talking about living this thing day in and day out, 365 days out of the year for 25 years. I submit that those who live set apart know more about humanity than those who are still immersed in the world. That's why when we speak, our words Go deep. Spiritual matters are not the same as worldly matters. And most people confuse education and learning the way that the world teaches you to define and discern. They think that that will work over here in this. And remember that the Apostle Saul told the assembly at Corinth that the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yah. And even the foolishness of Yah is wiser than the wisdom of this world. The deception of today is we think since someone is either older or is an Israelite, this makes them automatically mature. Wrong. In this walk, we must be active in developing the fruit of the Spirit. I said active and not passive. I mean, just no more than a few weeks ago, I said, you mean to tell me you can live on this community and not read your Bible every day? Appalling. Simply amazing. Unbelievable. Even in sickness, it's the time to pick up the book. We spend so much time so-called discerning others that we forget ourselves. Slander is a very malicious act which also involves spreading negative so-called facts about someone. Facts are not always the truth. Romans 1.8 says, For the wrath of Yah is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, and unrighteousness of men, what do they do? They hold the truth in unrighteousness. Kind of like a bribe almost. Third John 1 John 1.9 says, I wrote unto the assembly, but the opportunities, who love to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Why the opportunities couldn't receive the order and the leader then? Because he Love the preeminence. <laughs> Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds. He's going to remember his actions, which he doeth, priding against us with what? Malicious words. And not content therewith. Neither doeth he himself receive the brethren, and forbid them that would, and cast them out of the assembly. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of Yah. It's kind of hard to discern good when your heart is evil, isn't it? If your heart is full of malice, full of envy, full of jealousy, you will see no good in nothing. 
And I do mean nothing. The only good you would ever see is somebody agree with the wickedness that is in you. And you will call that Yah. He that doeth good is of Yah, but he that doeth evil have not seen Yah. And that means have a relationship with him. The purpose is to taint an image. They disguise things and paint in your windows. Our problem is lack of discernment. Lack of discernment. Proverbs 10, 8, listen to this. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prattin' fool shall fall. Proverbs 10, 17. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof, err. You ever notice how we act whenever we're reproved? Why would somebody want to waste their time reproving you, knowing that all they're going to get is kickback? I said it once, I said it a thousand times, make it a thousand one. That's because someone loves you more than you hate yourself. I guess if we're going to earnestly contend for the faith, we have to contend for your wickedness in order to get you to see the error of your way in order to try to at least make an attempt to put righteousness in your path. He that hideth hatred, notice, that's a hypocrite. There are many people that hate you, but yet they will communicate with you. And they'll do it with malice in their hearts. Simply because the environment is nice. But it says, he that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. I think that y'all is very serious about this slander stuff. And I'm telling you right now, that is the reason why all across this world and all across the assembly and in every single assembly camp tribe, the reason why we suffer from being mature. We are very immature people. Most people today have not the strength Courage or power to resist the slander. You know, the apostle Saul was teaching the assemblies at Corinth and stuff, and he says, you know, if meat make my brother to offend, then guess what I will not do? I will not eat no meat. Most of us says, well, it's lawful and I'll eat it anyway. That's just in the example of meat. If it makes your brother to offend. Are you following me? I have enough sense. To not say certain things. Around certain people. Because they're not able to bear it. Nor able to handle it. I mean. After all. If meat will make his brother to offend. First of all he has to have a serious spirit of discernment. To know that. He says he will refrain, even though all things are lawful. It's just that that time is not expedient. But for most of us today, we wouldn't care, would we? Because the law says I can. But the law also restricts you as well. Providing that you can actually lower yourself, base yourself a little bit so that your brother can be edified until he or she comes to the level of maturity and understanding. I don't speak to the elders, like I do the people that are regularly just commonly coming to church, coming to assembly. I dare not. There are things I can speak to the elders about. They can't even handle it. It's not that they can't handle it. It's just that at that point in time, they're not at that level of maturity. Is that making sense? There are things that you say with your brothers and sisters that you dare not rehearse these matters to children. There are also children that are in grown bodies as well. But see, you have to exercise discernment. Because there are things that you could say that could cause your brother or sister to stumble or fall. And since we live in a world of offense, and we know that the adversary is waiting on an offense just so that somebody can have an excuse to go do evil. That's the type of environment we're in. Remember, 
we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against these principalities and these powers who are very alive and very well. But if you heard a slanderer, could you resist it? Could you cut it off? The majority of the time, you feel trapped. And if you can't ever discern when a slanderer is speaking, that's because your heart is diseased and you love the environment yourself. There's one thing that is always true. It's the word of Yah. The word says evil communication corrupt good manners. I have never, ever, ever seen a man or woman ever trump that. When you meet someone, usually when you first have a good impression, your first impression is about them, you usually are pretty much on the up and up about them. But if you hear an evil word about them, whether you like it or not, it will change your attitude. Remember, we're spiritual beings. People can discern and tell when something is wrong. They may not say it, but they can tell when something is wrong. We need people to be in tune to know how to resist the Diablo, the adversary. The devil. To check them at the door. Most people who slander are very friendly people, kind, nice person. You will want to be around. The heart is clearly manifested with what comes out of the mouth. Many people act like they are concerned about someone when in truth they have hatred in their hearts. You are you're not as concerned as you think you are because if you are really truly concerned then guess what you would do? You'll throw a lifeline to your brother or sister. You would edify. Yes, you would. You would love them and consider also yourself. But because hatred is so deep in your heart, that's all you can perform. Because you have been bit by the viper, especially when you believe yourself to be so spiritual. A slander is very slick and cunning. Questions, 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 questions. Have you ever had a positive image about someone only to have your perspective change about them because of something negative someone has said? A slander is a worker of Satan, a worker of corruption. Why is it that the scriptures, I mean, here we are saved, sanctified, Holy Spirit filled, fire baptized. Why is it that the scriptures always seem to admonish us over and over and over and over again? I mean... When you read and double ring the blessings and the curses, you only got 15 verses that even pertain to the blessings. But it's pretty extensive from 15 all the way to 68 is nothing but curses. There's more warning. More warning. That's because we live in a fallen world. You can only experience the joy of the Most High when you're in his favor. That's right. Jeremiah 9, 4 says, Take heed, take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant. That's right. And every neighbor will walk with slander. I suppose that exempts you, right? In other words, that's what's in our heart. Surplant, one who overreaches, one who seeks to replace, one who uses his tongue to circumvent. You know, we get angry. Our excuse is, well, I was feeling that way. You just sinned. How many people ever usually repent after you get finished venting? Very little. Very few. And guess what? That's probably the reason why we're running short on maturity too. Because when you're venting, you don't think you're wrong. You're, after all, you're just expressing your heart. What you forgot is very evil. Care nothing about the atmosphere and who it's going to touch. 
display the devil, the adversary with freedom and liberty in the midst of a holy environment. And whoever reproves someone doing that. I mean, correction and reproof is just not left up to the pastors and the elders. It teaches us to reprove your brother. You may gain him as a friend. Admonish him. We usually sit by mute. And the reason why we sit by mute is because our own heart condemns us because we're just like them. Because I submit if your heart wasn't like that, you'd be quick to check that brother or sister that they do it no more. Israel, it's time for you to learn the voice of the devil and a very immature saint. Your adversary, the slanderer, think, because someone is kind, to you and smiles constantly does not mean they have a good heart. When you start checking the slander, they will not be the friend you thought they were. Because everybody's going to fight to defend their character and nature and honor. At first, they got to be convinced. I tell you the best way I've learned, the best way I've learned is to leave the slander alone after you have admonished them. And I'll show you the, the wisdom of that, okay? Show you the wisdom of that. To Helium 50, verse 16. But to the wrong, coming from the scriptures version, Elohim said, what right have you to recite my laws? Or take my covenant in your mouth? While you hated instruction and cast my words behind you, when you saw a thief, you were pleased with him, and you took part with adulterers. You let your mouth loose to evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit, speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. And you have done this, and I kept silent. You have thought that I was altogether like you. You hear that? Because a lot of times, you know, we learn in this world that silent is consent to agreement, right? Yes. And you thought, that's what the most I said, because I remained silent. You thought that I was just like you. You ran your mouth, you ran your lip, and you thought I was just like you. He says, I rebuke you and set it in order before your eyes. Understand this, please. You who forget Yah, lest I tear you to pieces with no one to deliver. In other words, the slander, like every dog, is going to have his day. From the King James it reads, Whoso offered praise glorifies me. And to him that order his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of Yah. Example of a slander with the Apostle Saul. In Acts 6, 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertarians and the Cyrenians and the Alexandrians, and them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able, here it is again, look at this, to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they, suborn man, would say it, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against Yah. I would say you ain't heard nothing. And they stirred up the people. And they did what? And they did what? A slanderer does that well. 
They go find kindred spirits and stir them up. They get bit and they get poisoned. And now the truth to them is the poison that has been administered to them. And the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, this man ceases not to speak blasphemous, meaning slanderous words against this holy place and the law. But we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us and all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. In other words, when you hear all these things and you know that they're speaking against you, don't allow your, your countenance to fall. An attempt to stop the devil from operating in our lives. In closing, what is wisdom? Resist the slander. The true essence of a, or I mean essence of an Israelite, a true Israelite is, look at this, 2 Timothy 3.10. But thou hast fully known my teaching. That's what doctrine is. And watch this. Not only that, but look at this. Manner of life. Purpose. Faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. You know, if we have people that display all that in front of us, why come we, why is it, how is it that we do not pay more attention to those good virtues and try to mimic them and be like them? What manner of people would we be if we could mimic these virtues that we see? Because the Apostle Paul had told the people over and over again, the things that you see in me do. But it's like there's something in us that always want to crawl to the lowest base form of nature that there is in order to get comfort. Look what he said. Not only have you known all this, he said, by persecutions and afflictions. Which came to me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra. And look at this. What persecutions I endured. But out of them all the master delivered me. Even your pastor. You have watched the most high Yah deliver me. From the hands of the enemy again. And again. And again. And again. And again. No matter how many false videos. No how many false witnesses. No matter how many lies and stuff. You know. Either y'all's going to be your defense. Or he's not going to be your defense. Because tongues and voices are going to rise up against you. In judgment. And yet and still. I still stand. And the enemy falls. You stand. Don't concern yourself too much with the judgments of men. Yah is greater than man. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus, what is the truth that you will suffer? You will suffer persecution if you're living godly. If you're not living nothing, the devil has no attack for you. Even if you live evil and wicked in this world, you're condoned and celebrated. You live godly in this world, you will be persecuted. False witnesses will rise up against you. First Peter 2 1 says, Wherefore laying aside, notice this, look at this, nature, lay aside what? Malice and all which is evil speaking. You follow that? Remove from you the deceitful tongue. You know, a true Israelite, like the Messiah recognizing Nathaniel, in whom there is no God. He said, how do you know me? And hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. All of these are bad conditions of the heart. 
And every one of them manifested by the manifestation of the tongue. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if so be, if so be, you have tasted that the master is gracious. You know, it'd be no problem laying these aside if you would taste that Jesus is good. It really ain't no problem at all. Proverbs 30.10 says, Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. In the scriptures it says, Do not slander a servant to his master, lest he curse you, and you be found guilty. You see, there's a danger you need to be aware of. You slander someone who knows this book and they know what they're doing, and then they curse you to the Father. The Father has holy angels already dispatched ready to do his bidding. Why do you think he says in Isaiah 54, 17, over and over and over again, that if any tongue rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Is he saying that just so he can say words? Or is there something on standby to fight for you that you can't see with your naked eye? That's why I keep telling you over and over and over again, there's no law against spiritual warfare. Let them wag on you with their tongue. Then you wag on them with your tongue. In the law of righteousness. You know, we often say, let Yah fight our battles. Then let him fight your battles then. Amen. Let him fight your battles. You'll find out if, you, if your heart is good enough for him to hear you. Lacking understanding. Matthew 15, 16, and Jesus said, are you also without understanding? Do you not yet Understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. But those things which proceedeth out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceedeth, look at this. What, what comes from the heart? Evil thoughts. And many of you function after those thoughts. Y'all ain't never told you when you have something come from your heart to use that as, as reality, truth, and then function after it. Murderers, it all comes from the heart. Adulteries, it comes from the heart. Fornicators, heart. Thefts, false witnesses, blasphemes, which are, it all comes from the heart. Every bit of it does. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands to found not a man. Slanderers talk about things they do not know nor understand. We simply talk about the simple subject of polygyny and the slanders come out in groves. Not knowing that they are judging y'all. They look at man, they go, wow, look at what y'all got. You know, it's, it's supposed to be what? Uh, the forbidden subject to touch. And the first thing they do is they come out and they believe they're judging you when they're really judging a lawgiver. And watch this. Jude 1.10 says, but these speak evil of those things which they know not. How many times people have done that? They speak evil and give judgments of things they have no comprehension, no understanding whatsoever at all. All they know is that their little wicked feelings is offended and hurt. Not that they know the truth about anything. But what they know naturally, as brute beasts, notice this is the type of comprehension even brute beasts have. In those things, they corrupt themselves. And, and you know, the more they speak, the more they become corrupt. Sirach 19.15 says, admonish a friend, for many times it is a slander and believe not every tale. See, this is the difference about a friend. When you accept a friend, so you assume that everything they're saying is right. Because you already accept them as a friend and you don't assume they're going to do you no harm. Isn't that right? You didn't think your friend, you didn't think your family was going to lie to you either about Christmas and Easter and Sunday either though, did you? Because you believe that too, didn't you?
You only come to the knowledge of truth about that that your family lied to you and they didn't really mean to do it, but yet they did it too. So a friend can do it too. Sirach 26, 5. There be three things my heart feareth. And for the fourth, I was so afraid. Look at this. The slander of a city. Terrified. See, a slanderer is an agent of Satan. And he says, I'm terrified of this one right here. Because the slander is only after those who are immature and don't understand the law of Yah. You know how many people who have been killed spiritually because they've given place to slander? I mean, I'm a preacher. I'm a minister. I expect, I, I can see people when they first come around, man, their eyes are lit up and they forget the spirit that draw them. But then they get around the wrong crowd. And all of a sudden, the eye that was at one time good becomes evil towards me. And they think that I've been in this all this time, I can't discern that. Most of the time, I'm trying to throw out a lifeline to save. But they've been poisoned so bad. And the offense has risen so great. Y'all don't mind if I use myself as an example, right? I mean, because it does happen. It happens right in front of your very eyes. People will uproot their whole families and everything, just even move around the ministry and stuff. Did they do that just so that they can actually leave and cut off and go back off into the world and be worse than what they were when they came? They were doing fine when they first come. And then some of them got around some of you. See, some of you are the viper. You the devil himself operating in you. You have bit people, and they have slithered off and been poisoned and died, and yet and still, you still here. You still here. Because there's no way that nobody could come around this ministry and then have other people who come the same way that they did could ever be poisoned by this ministry unless they're talking about those who've been around, talking to those who've been around for a while. Because when they come, they all have the same testimony. Amen. Utterly amazing, isn't it? And that's because you probably disagree with something. You vent. Because things ain't working your way. The way you think it should. And yet nobody's been drawn to you. Yet you don't have a word that will draw anybody. You don't even have a ministry. Everybody's put us in the body. You know, Yah's put us in the body, every one of us, right? In different places in this body. And the only one that gets the glory is the head. Which none of us are not that. And never will be. And yet with the eye we condemn the nose. With the eye, we condemn the finger, and the finger pointing at the ass, and the ass pointing at the foot. And, and we can rehearse these matters over and over again. You've been placed in the body for a particular use, but just like the opera trees, you want preeminence. You had the Absalom spirit, you go around and start spitting in other people's ears, making empty promises that you can't even deliver on yourself because you can't even deliver yourself. And you bite them, and then a slithering off they go. And then they begin to go and rehearse and poison others with things you said. You know how big this ministry would be if we here straightway were all, every single one of us, were filled with the fruit of the Spirit? Ah, right, come on now, pastor ain't no fool now. Many of us got blood on our hands. And some of us are so blinded by it that we'll never even know it until the day of judgment. We hold ourselves unguilty. I've done nothing. 
Tree is known by its fruit? Sure it is. Tree is always known by its fruit. If somebody's biting up your tree, chances are they will become healthy more than more sick. The slander of a city are gathering together an unruly multitude. A false accusation. All these. No, notice that. All these are worse than death. And nobody wants to die. We all want to live. He says every one of these are worse than death. Verse 6. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. See, a woman is not going to automatically come outright to you and admit that they are jealous of another woman. What they'll do is they'll start tearing down this woman that they're jealous of. And they will not say favorable words. And then you'll watch a few people all of a sudden with their coups start attacking the woman that they're jealous of. Because they have not the character, the strength and honor just to do it themselves. You know, they'll bite them. You know, the scripture says that jealousy is the rage. Now, what, what are you going to wait on? An outward show of emotion before you can be able to discern rage? Rage is also very silent and deadly. Rage, the most deadly form of it, is a voice that doesn't even raise an inflection. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another and a scourge of the tongue which communicateth with all. Sirach 27, 22. He that winketh with his eyes worketh evil and he that knoweth him will depart from him. Now, check this. We live in a time where everybody done read the scripture about winking so people don't go around winking no more. <laughs> They'll read that and go, oh, I ain't. You know, a lot of times we. And those of us who know the scripture, see, I, I got sense enough to know. I see new people come around and, and, and I know that that gesture, they really mean nothing by it. Are you following? But we read it and we go, well, oh, I ain't winking no more because look. And believe me, every time somebody winks at me, that word always comes up in my mind. Because if those people, come on, they wouldn't wink if they knew what the word says. I just chalk it up as ignorance. You know, in the world, they just learn. Just winking, you know, that really mean nothing by it. They just dumb. <laughs> Don't know any better. What we need to start doing is watching those who kind of lighten their eyes towards you. Mm -hmm. They ain't winking all the way. But they're setting the environment. And look what it says from here. When thou art present, he will speak sweet. And will admire your words. But at the last, he would rip his mouth and slander your sins. Everything you say, as soon as they get out of your prayer, they'll dissect it, dissect it, and tear it down. They're going to their little congregation, trying to build on another man's ministry. The book is clear. That's what they would do. Boy, devil ain't got nowhere to run, run and hide tonight, do it? Huh? That's why y'all stiff like mannequins. 
Look at this, verse 24. I have hated many things, but nothing like him for the master will hate him. You mean to tell me that the master will hate a slanderer? Yes. Uh -huh. That's bad company. Your adversary, he always goes about as a roaring lion, preying on. Seeking whom he will devour. Beware of the slanderer. Isn't it sad that just so short after unleavened bread, I've had to ban people from this ministry for six months already? Because they would come and sport themselves and think they wouldn't be discovered. Some been banned for 30 days, some for six months. I keep telling people over and over again, we're not toying around with you. We're not going to play with you. What kind of leaders would we be if we had let the Diablo or the adversary sport himself? And then there'd be no judgment. We'll see what kind of righteousness you got in you if you can meet these conditions. It's amazing. The world, they have, you know, uh, punishments for us. And we can accept them. And we'll meet them conditions just as long as we get free. But also, we come to the assembly, we're supposed to just let you cart brunt run wild and crazy. And I, and, I, and I let them run, too. Let them go ahead and do what they're going to do and stuff and wait till they got right back to their place. You don't come here, and you don't go to no assembly for six months, you devil. And you tell them that Pastor Dow said it. Somebody's got to watch for our soul, which consists of intellect, mind, will, emotions. Is that right? Somebody got to watch because we're not going to do it. This is the only thing that will keep us from maturing. Is speaking slanders. It's what's shortchanging your maturity in the most high yah. If you really want to grow in grace and grow in knowledge, learn how to control that tongue. Again, I know how it feels when you feel like you have to say something. That's when you can exercise restraint. Until you hear something, until you hear the matter later, oh yeah, after. And remember the law. Come on, harm no one, even with your tongue. Remember, we're all worthy of death. Let us stand. Y'all, we thank you for all things. Pray to you, saying, sing deep down in our hearts, magnificent name of Yahshua, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And we're going to, uh, those of you who are planning on being with us in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, on the 15th of May, um, if you have been approved by us, uh, you can start calling the dining hall, let's say, fifth day. Call the dining hall fifth day, um, and we will have the address Therefore, either the sisters give it to you. If you send me an email, I'll send it to you that way. Uh, we give you the location and the time. The time is going to be 1 p.m. And we're looking forward to seeing those of you who have already been invited. Um, and as a matter of fact, I may even tell us and don't even invite anybody else except the ones that are already on the list, okay? So if somebody comes up and say that, well, Pastor, we have changed our mind, we'll come and tell them no. Stay right where they're at, okay? Y'all hear that, sisters? All right, shalom, shalom, the king is coming.